Okay, everybody, let's take a look at this uh, student sample brief from a prior semester. It is a student sample, so it's not perfect, and I added a couple comments here and there uh, with some things to fix. Um, but anyway, I want to point out the parts of the trial brief. Uh, first, we have the caption, where you indicate which court you're filing the brief in, the party names, judge's name, case number. And this should be pretty easy to create, uh, as you could simply copy and paste from your assignment documents. Next, there's the title to brief, self-explanatory, brief of United States in opposition, motion to motion to suppress. Then we have the introduction. What you're trying to do in the introduction is to uh, explain to the court generally what is this case is uh, what is this case about, and where are we at with the proceedings? What are you asking for? You know who's filing the brief? Uh, that sort of information. And so the intro is really helpful because a judge or her clerk, when that person picks up the brief uh, and says, "Okay, it's U.S. v. Winchester." The, the, the clerk might not have any idea of what the status of the case is. You know, courts have so many cases on their docket, so the intro is very helpful uh, guidance to the court. Next, you have your statement of facts, and you have other lecture, uh, lecture content in your course talking about how to spin the facts to uh, tie into your arguments, spin the facts in favor of your client, and so forth. Uh, you want to make sure in your statement of facts to cite to the record throughout. Next, after the statement of facts, you have the argument section of the brief, uh, main point heading, motion to suppress should be denied, and after that, a roadmap of your later point headings. So if you have later point headings A and B, you should roadmap those headings. Uh, the language in your roadmap does not have to be identical to point headings A and B, but it should be fairly consistent. So after the roadmap, uh, the student included some general rules, uh, and then describe that there's a circuit split and urges the court to adopt the rationale of the 11th circuit and reject the other circuits. So that's really helpful guidance of, of, you know, this was District of Minnesota in the 8th circuit and explaining to the court, you know, there's a circuit split. We don't have a decision yet in the 8th circuit, uh, but this court should follow uh, the 11th circuit. Okay, next we have point heading A and to support this uh, point heading A argument, uh, the student needs to provide relevant law and then apply it to the facts. And the student was obviously thinking about emphasizing controlling authority first. You know, here's a U.S. statute, and here's what the U.S. Supreme Court has said on this issue. And then, uh, again, explaining, okay, neither U.S. Supreme Court nor Eighth Circuit have addressed this issue, and urging the court to adopt the Eleventh Circuit uh, position. Next, there's a case description, Vergara, uh, you know, there's a topic sentence, facts, holding, rationale, all those things that you need in a case description. Uh, throughout the brief, the student uh, incorporates uh, uh, good support from the case law uh, and, and other legal authorities to support his position, so good usage of a rule to support the argument some good fact comparisons, um, examining differences in the duration of the forensic search. So again, throughout the brief, the student was doing a good job using cases to support his position. You know, pulling a fact out of a case that's, that's similar, or using court's reasoning, or using a rule out of a case uh, to support the argument, which is very important. Courts make decisions based on applying precedent, and that's exactly what the student is doing. Uh, in this in this sample brief, uh, you know, make sure to cite U.S. reports and not Supreme Court reporters. So make sure to check Table One of your Blue Book. Uh, yeah, again, we see more more uh, good usage of precedent to support the arguments. Uh, next. Final conclusion and close with what you're asking for. You know, this is commonly called the prayer for relief. You know, we're asking the court to deny defendant's motion to suppress. And then sign your brief with uh, student ID number and make up fake uh, contact info. So hopefully uh, this video and the student sample brief along with the other uh, lecture content in the course will give you some good ideas of how to put together the 
uh, trial brief for your current assignment. So thank you for listening and good luck.